Hey there, chemists. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to look at oxidative cleavage reactions. These are types of oxidations that let us literally slice right through carbon-carbon pi bonds and the sigma bonds that make up things like alkenes and alkynes. We're going to start with uh, ozonolysis, which is a way of taking an alkene and turning it into carbonyl compounds. So if I take just propene, treat it with ozone, you will get an equivalent of acetaldehyde and formaldehyde. And it looks as if we sliced right through that carbon-carbon bond. So we got a two-carbon aldehyde and a one-carbon aldehyde. And that's what you usually get. What you see is what you get. So we have, in this case, aldehydes. Now the mechanism that's involved in this is a little bit beyond the scope of the kinds of reactions we've been working on, but I'm going to go through it anyway just so you see how it happens. And I'm going to use this as an exercise in showing you all the intermediates, and then I want you to fill in the curved arrows as we go along. So let's take a look at the mechanism template, and you'll add curved arrows. First let's just redraw the alkene, and then I'm going to draw out the ozone molecule which actually looks like that, with a negative on one oxygen and a positive on the other. And then when those two things see each other, you form a five-membered ring that looks like this. This is called a malazanide. Remember, chemistry is also a language class. Malazanides are not very stable. On their own, they collapse and turn into what looks like this, two separate molecules. Again, you go back and put in the curved arrows. You can pause this and do it along the way or just go at the end and try it. And then those two molecules that are separate from each other actually recombine and you get a different five-membered ring that looks like this. This is called an ozonide. And ozonides are actually the product of ozonolysis and an alkene. At this stage, we need to use a type of reducing agent. There's many. I'm going to use triphenylphosphine to show this. And triphenylphosphine will attack this ozonide. Give you another intermediate that opens the ring up. With a positive charge on the phosphorus. And finally, this collapses to give you your acetaldehyde product, your formaldehyde product, and then a byproduct, which is triphenylphosphine oxide. And it looks like that. So that means I actually have to go back to the original reaction and follow up the, the first reagents. This is really two steps. Step one is treating it with gaseous ozone. Step two is the reducing agent. And since we saw triphenylphosphine, I'll put it in there. It's okay if you accidentally omit that. Every chemist will know what you mean, that there's a follow-up, but I might as well show it. So now, if you didn't do it along the way, I'd like you to hit pause and try to go back and fill in the curved arrows for every single one of the steps you just saw, and then check and see how you did. Okay, well, Let's see how you did. So the first part is this cycloaddition between ozone and the alkene. The negatively charged oxygen forms a bond with that carbon. The pi bond forms a bond with that oxygen, sending that pi bond up to that positively charged oxygen. That's how you get to the neutral malazonide. Now this breaks because this carbon, uh, this oxygen-oxygen bond is very weak, sends an electron pair onto that oxygen. That takes one of these lone pairs on the neighboring oxygen, brings it down to form a double bond, and here's where that carbon-carbon pi bond breaks. And that's how you get to this carbonyl. Now this molecule actually just sort of turns upside down. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw this upside down so I can show more easily where the next intermediate comes from. And what we get is this oxygen attacks that carbonyl, or that oxonium carbon, I should say, it sends that pi bond up to that oxygen, lone pair attacks that, and we can move that pi bond down. Some of those arrows are combinations of resonance arrow, so it's okay if you have something slightly different, but that's where the bonds form, the bonds break. Then triphenylphosphine attacks the ozonide. It'll attack this oxygen, breaking that oxygen-oxygen single bond. The oxygen-oxygen single bond is notoriously weak, so we see that a lot. And then lastly, we reform a carbonyl here, 
breaking this carbon oxygen bond and sending that pair of electrons up to that oxygen. So again, this was just a way of practicing some of our arrow pushing skills. This is not a mechanism I'm gonna expect you to be able to reproduce for the purposes of this class, but it's a good practice to use curved arrows to explain how bonds break and how bonds form. So let's try another one. We can also do ozonolysis on alkynes. However, you don't get uh, aldehydes, you actually get carboxylic acids. You can still think of it as cutting the carbon-carbon bond completely. In this case, I'll get a two-carbon carboxylic acid and a one-carbon carboxylic acid. Which looks like that. So I get acetic acid and formic acid in this example. This is also a, a two-step process. I'm going to fill in the reagents. Step one is ozone. Step two is actually water. You hydrate this. It's okay if you forget that. Everyone will know what you mean. Uh, but let's show the mechanism. I'll do the same things I did before. I'll show you all the intermediates, and then you go back and fill in the curved arrows. So this time we have an alkyne, and it sees an ozone molecule. You get a five-membered ring, just like we saw in the previous case. These have fun names, so I'm teaching you the names. This is called a trioxole, analogous to the malazonite up above. This collapses on its own. I'll let you fill in the curved arrows, and you get an intermediate that looks like this. And this cyclizes on itself and gives you a very unstable little molecule with a three-membered ring and a four-membered ring and a bunch of oxygens. This is called a trioxacyclopentane because the largest ring size is actually five. And then this opens back up. There's a lot of just rearrangements that are happening as this thing cyclizes on itself in different ways. This opens up to give you a much more stable intermediate, which is a functional group we haven't seen since the days of our functional group dictionary. This is called an acid anhydride. Anhydride, analogous to anhydrous, meaning without water. So here comes the water. And this last part, I'm not gonna show the other intermediates for, that we're gonna get to this later in the semester, but hydrating an anhydride is actually how you get your carboxylic acids. So as opposed to alkene ozonolysis, which gives you aldehydes, alkyne ozonolysis gives you carboxylic acids. And as we did before, hit pause and see if you can go back and fill in all the curved arrows for those steps, and let's see how you did. Okay, the first step is the same as what we saw before, the ozone Negatively charged oxygen attacks that more substituted bond of the carbon-carbon triple bond. The pi bond forms a bond with that oxygen. That pi bond goes to the positively charged oxygen. That's how you get your trioxole. To get to the next intermediate, you break this oxygen-oxygen single bond, notoriously weak, sending a pair of electrons from this oxygen down, taking that pi bond and forming what looks like a ketone carbonyl. Now these are attached to the same molecule, but those first parts are just like the other one. In fact, the next part is just like the alkene reaction as well. This negatively charged oxygen attacks this ketone carbon. Those pi electrons come up to the oxygen and send a lone pair right next door to form that three-membered ring, shoving that pair of electrons up to the oxygen. That's how you get trioxacyclopentane, analogous to the ozonite up above. But this doesn't require a reducing agent. This will fall apart on its own, just with two curved arrows. The oxygen-oxygen single bond breaks to form one carbonyl, and then that breaks this carbon-carbon single bond to form the other carbonyl. That's how you get your anhydride. This last part, we're gonna skip the mechanism. Of. It's actually not that bad, but it's related to carboxylic acid derivatives, and that's more of an orgo-2 topic. Okay, so alkene ozonolysis gives you aldehydes, alkyne ozonolysis gives you carboxylic acids, Let's look at a different reaction that involves a stronger oxidizing agent with alkenes and alkynes. This I'm gonna call oxidative cleavage, and it uses potassium permanganate. When you treat an alkene with potassium permanganate, this alkene in particular, you get a carboxylic acid. First, looks just like ozonolysis. That's what these two carbons become. What about this other carbon, this third carbon that happens to be terminal, you actually get an equivalent of carbon dioxide. 
So how does that happen? Well, the alkene sees permanganate, which looks like this, if I draw out the polyatomic ion. I'm not drawing the spectating potassium ion. And we have a cyclization that's really similar to what we saw up above when ozone reacts with one of these pi bonds, and you get another five-membered ring. This reduces manganese. They still have an overall negative charge. And that's as much of the mechanism I'm going to show. The rest of this is with water, and it's either under basic conditions or acidic conditions that you can get different kinds of products. Under basic conditions, you can get a 1,2-diol. Also called a vicinal diol because they're in the same vicinity as each other, right next to each other. Under acidic conditions, this cleaves to become the products we showed above. You get a carboxylic acid. You actually get a second carboxylic acid. You might say, uh, how come you drew CO2 up here? Well, this is carbonic acid, isn't it? And if you remember from any of your general chemistry classes, carbonic acid very quickly falls apart to become H2O and CO2. So when we have a terminal carbon sitting on the end of an alkene, it just becomes a CO2 molecule. So overall, I imagine slicing through this bond and those two carbons become a carboxylic acid. And that's the main way we'll use this synthetically. Last one, something very similar happens with alkynes. Again, with permanganate, we slice through that carbon-carbon bond. The two carbons on the left become a carboxylic acid. The carbon on the right becomes a CO2. So there's actually, if you notice in the transformation, no difference and if you start with an alkene or an alkyne, they both carve through that carbon-carbon bond and you get carboxylic acids. In fact, that's an easy way to remember this. We get carboxylic acids every time, don't we? Except for alkenosanolysis. That's the only one that's quite different. So how does this happen? I'll show a little bit of the mechanism. The alkyne, which I'll draw vertically, reacts with permanganate. You get the same type of arrow pushing that we have right up above. So you get a five-membered ring with a reduced manganese species. And this just needs water as well. I'm going to skip the rest of this mechanism for now. But it turns into a dicarbonyl. In this case, a ketone and an aldehyde. Dicarbonyl. And this continues to react with permanganate in a series of other steps that are frankly just beyond the scope of where we're at right now in Orgo. And we're just gonna use this as a synthetic transformation, but that's how you eventually cleave that carbon-carbon bond and you get your carboxylic acid and your other carboxylic acid. And just like up above, that carbonic acid turns into a CO2. So that means it doesn't matter if I start with an alkene or an alkyne. Permanganate will give me a carboxylic acid and a CO2 molecule for that terminal carbon. So let's summarize this. In summary, the main thing that we're looking at is if you have a carbon-carbon bond that's got pi bonds in it, these conditions can carve right through them to give me ketones and aldehydes. This is an ozonolysis one. I can tell that the three carbons I see in the beginning over here become that ketone. The one carbon I see right there becomes that formaldehyde molecule. So what you see is what you get. B, I see a carboxylic acid. This must be permanganate. Permanganate cuts that carbon-carbon bond. I can imagine it cutting that carbon-carbon bond as well. So where did my carbon pieces go? Well, those five carbons are right where they put uh, right where they were. Where are those two single carbon pieces? Well, we also made CO2 molecules, didn't we? Aha, uh -huh, there they are. So there's one, and then there's the other one. 
Okay, so that's how we take carbon-carbon pi bonds, uh, alkenes and alkynes, and completely cut through them and the single bond with ozone and permanganate to make carbonyl compounds.